Hey, welcome everyone back to the Power Baseball League. If you were with us last week, we were talking about using an on-demand flow to add our registrants into their seasons, make sure we have everything all set up. So after we've done that, maybe we notice that a few of our contacts or the kids in our baseball league didn't get registered for this season. So what we wanted to do is create a email template so that we could uh, reach out to their reach out to those kids or maybe to their parents and say, hey, we didn't we saw you're not registered. Here's the form we want to register. You re may remember us creating that form a few weeks back, back mm -hmm. I guess in the fall, right when we worked with customer voice. So I'm going to pass it over to Malcolm, who's going to show you how to create an email template. Awesome. So I'm going to pull up this page here. So we're just into the normal um email template creator so we went into the settings area and went to templates and went to email templates and so one of the things to point out here is that um the the tool that they give you the the capability of the the email editor and creator really isn't that robust and i my opinion my personal opinion is that's on purpose because they've really been pushing dynamics marketing and a lot of the tools there which come with some some seriously enhanced capabilities when it comes to creating emails and dynamic emails and images and all that kind of stuff. So I don't know that, I mean, maybe the day will come when we see more robust feature in the, the native sort of out of the box editor, but I don't know that they will because they want you to use the other products, which totally makes sense. But you do have some capabilities and there's a couple of kind of cheat codes, if you will, that you can use to create semi-attractive emails in, in the tool that, that, as it is today. So we're gonna kind of show you some of that um, and I'll get started. So per Kylie's example, we're gonna we're gonna create a template that we will send when we query people who don't have a registration for this year. We wanna identify them and we know registration deadlines coming up. Pardon my nose, did you? Uh, the registration date's coming up and we want them to register. So we wanna appeal to them and kind of get their attention and be like, hey, don't forget to register. Sometimes parents are busy and they just forget. And so we're gonna create a template. So I'm gonna start with new. And something weird that we noticed when we came up, and we think this is environment specific, is what you're seeing here. Right? We've got what should be a full list of things, and there are options here, but they don't show up. What's even more weird is when I pick the type that I'm selecting here, so I want contact because I want to pull dynamic data from the contact record. I'm going to pick contact. I'm going to say, OK, it's going to open up a new window, which I'm going to expand. And so what's interesting is the category shows that it's still a user. And that's really kind of bizarre. So we don't really understand what's going on there. We still have the ability to select some of the options, not the big long list that you were looking at a minute ago. So I'm not sure what's going on there, maybe a little bug or something in the new UI. Um, I know there were some issues recently, maybe it's linked to that, who knows? Either way, I'm gonna make that change now. I'm gonna name this. So let's call this 2021, uh, we, we miss you. And so from here, what we're essentially going to do, I'm going to go ahead and save this just to save those settings. Oh, I need a required field for email subject. So this will be uh, register today. And so I'm going to go ahead and save it just so that it's saved. And then what I want to do is flip out of here and I actually want to go into Word because I started crafting my email template there for a couple of reasons. So the first and foremost one is that I have the ability to put a link in here, whereas you don't necessarily have that capability in the out of the box editor. You can't create a, a hyperlink to something, but if you put it in Word first, and you can see I kind of tailored the text, I've gone ahead and put the whole thing in here, and I can just copy this, I'm gonna flip back, and I'm just gonna go ahead and paste this right in here, and it's gonna retain that link. So that link will now be a dynamic click, just like you would expect a link to work. They can click that register here and it's actually gonna take them directly to the registration form that we built that Kylie talked about earlier. So starting in Word is always a great a great place to begin because you, you do have extra capability there. Cool, yeah, um, and I else? think an, another thing to keep in mind when you do that is that you uh, could also use that if you wanted to embed, embed photos or do other customizations on your templates. Maybe you're working with a marketing team who wants to make your templates look and feel a certain way. So what you can do is have them create that in Word or whatever email editor that they're using to build out those templates. And then you can just view it 
and copy everything and paste it into here. And then you can make sure you get that format, make sure you get those pictures and all of that. Just keeping in mind, it's best if those pictures are already hosted somewhere online so that you're just displaying them in your email, not actually attaching them. Because I think right now um, we can't have email attachments in the email templates. Um, I, I, yeah, so <laughs> I was gonna say, I think we can, but that's, I'm thinking of something different. So one of the things that popped out when we opened this up and we were kind of getting ready for this is that they have made some modifications. So as much as I just finished saying to everybody, you're probably not going to see a lot. I, I stand by that. I don't think you're going to see a, a, a wholly robust, great functionality set here, um, roll out, but they have made some enhancements like the format painter, which is always a favorite tool of mine, right? So you wanted to, sometimes you type things out and you put something in a different font, you want it all to match. You can actually highlight text, sweep it with the painter and then grab whatever you want to change and it'll just apply whatever format you've copied to that text. So that's a really cool feature. I'm not sure actually when they added it, maybe it's been around for a while, but I've never noticed it until we opened this up getting ready for this. And I was like, that, I don't recognize that button there. There's also the link capability here too, which I noticed um, earlier today, just as we were getting ready to shoot this, um, noticed that the button was there and I don't recall seeing that either. So that may be something that they've now added in. If that is if that is in fact an indeed functional, you wouldn't necessarily need to start in Word. Um, you could just build it out right from here. Yeah, and I do think you're right that attachments are now supported. I think you can tell you can tell how long Malcolm and I have been doing this stuff, right? That now we can't remember what's in which versions. Um, right. So the attachments would be really good if, say, maybe you had a new client email and you have a, a questionnaire that they need to fill out every time. You could attach that questionnaire to the email. Uh, but I think still, if you have branding or things like that that are appearing in your email template, still recommended to have those hosted somewhere just to keep all of your emails to a manageable manageable size because you also don't want to be paying for storage for all of these attachments in your uh, dynamics, right, in Dataverse. And it, it could be, uh, we don't need to go down this rabbit hole, but quick campaigns don't have the attachment capability, but if you use a template, you you can kind of cheat the system that way and and pull the the templated email into a quick campaign, which could include the attachment. So maybe that's what we were thinking about in terms of what is it that doesn't have that. I know quick campaigns don't don't have that, or didn't at least didn't used to have that capability for attachments. So enough banter about that. We've we've got our template created. We've got everything ready to go here. This is obviously a simplistic example. And so we want to get this ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and save and close this. And then what we can do is if we flip into one of our records, we'll use this one as an example. And you can see we were playing around with this. I'm going to go ahead and create an email. And it's going to open up a blank email. And right up top in the ribbon, we've got the ability to say insert template. And it's going to give us a list of all the ones that we want. So here's the one we just created. Go ahead and pull that in. And it's got the text here, but we can apply the template. Now, something that's been coming up today that surprised us both, and we were, it actually started last week, we noticed this coming up, is what you see here. It's not taking the templated text. And what's interesting, what we found is if we go into one of the uh, email templates here, so this system came with a bunch pre-populated. If we take the text out of one of these and copy this dynamic field, so just bear with me, if we copy this text right down here and put it in to the template and then save it and then try and run it, it seemed to work. But when we did it the way we just did it today, and we did that intentionally because we want to show you that this seems to be a thing that's going on and we don't know why. Maybe some of you have the answer. We'd love to hear from you. But if we just create it the way we did just now, and I flip back here, you can see it's not dynamically pulling in the name. What it should be doing is saying, oh, well, you're on Carter Roth, the contact. So let's put Carter Roth's name in there. And a really neat thing that they've added in is the ability to pick multiple fields. So you can say, pick the contact full name. If not, then put the word valued customer in there. And so if, there, if the data that was called dynamically isn't actually in the system, you can actually now specify another field from the form, which is really cool, or you can put text in there, like they've done here with the valued customer. And that way the system will basically say, okay, I'm gonna use the full name. Wait, he doesn't have one. Let's use the first name. Wait, they don't have one. Let's just use valued customer. And so some some slick functionality there that that is helpful because 
otherwise you had to kind of be creative about how you structured that field because otherwise it would just look like blank comma because they didn't have a name or whatever the case may be that's kind of a poor example because they always have a name but you you get the point yeah so, i think a good example there is like nickname right because you might have a nickname field okay. that's not populated all the time but sometimes so you want to either say nickname or first name or hello or something like that exactly yeah. yeah so if any of you know the answer and know why this is happening we'd love to hear from you because it kind of stumped us last week and we did some digging over the last little while we asked around to some people nobody seems to know and, and we're seeing inconsistent functionality between environments that are otherwise exactly the same so in some cases it's working fine and in other cases it's not so rather perplexed by that but again one of the the kind of hacks we found if you will is if we go into the template creation and i'm not going to show it all to you because it's a lot but copy that one out, go directly into the next template, paste it, save that, and then pull it up, it would pull the name just fine. Super strange. So that's that's an overview, very high level overview. We did touch on the fact that um, there was those attachments in there. Let me just save this. Uh, we had the capability to add an attachment, so you could put a document in here. Um, you could put you know, maybe a flyer in this scenario, maybe we give them, we've got a flyer set up with all the dates and all this stuff and it's all pretty and looks great. We could attach that so that they have it right with them when they get the email and that gets just routed out as it gets sent, which is a great feature to have. But again, somewhat real, um, somewhat limited in terms of your functionality. They're adding a little bit. I, again, don't think you're gonna see a, a, a fully robust, amazing experience in here. Maybe I'm wrong, hopefully I'm wrong because it would be great to have more features. But I think what's also cool about this is right now we created this as an individual template, but you do have the ability to create organization templates, right? So we could create this for all of the coaches, right? That they could go through and send it out to all of their players. Or if I am a regular person and I want to send an email specific, specifically from me to certain people, I have the ability to create my own template um, just for that. And we also Oops. have... Similarly, we have email signatures, which is a kind of new feature too that you can do, but some of the same functionality, which allows me to create a, a template signature that's automatically added to any of the emails I create. So some yeah, really great. cool stuff. Let's just try and just, you know, in the sake of we're all learning together, let's just close. I'm going to say this. I change it to organization, maybe by some strange chance. Let's just pop back to this record. And we'll try it again. Maybe it's like a if it's a personal template, you can't use it. It's not dynamic. But if it's organizationally owned. All our viewers no. can tell how, mu how much this has been irritating us. Oh, it's been driving me crazy. There's got to be something weird about it. So again, maybe some of you have the answer. But if you don't, you're watching this for the first time, you've never seen email templates, this gives you a high level overview of what they're capable of and what you can do. And so hopefully this gives you a little nudge in how to use them. And of course, as we've talked about a lot, it's the best way to learn some of this stuff. Take out a trial or get a get a, an environment set up and just kind of mess around and create your own templates and see what you can figure out and how you can go. And there is there's a lot of good use cases for this kind of stuff to like this one, right? Hey, we want people who who we want to see register. Let's send them a quick email template as a prompt. And we'd probably see a, a bit of a, a spike in terms of registrations coming in a day or two after sending this because it's a good reminder for people to be right i haven't done that yet i better get on that so that's one one use case there's lots of others maybe you have some use cases of your own you can drop them down in the chat otherwise yeah. I think that's all we have for today i think that's all we have and we'll see you next week where we pick up from here and start talking about marketing lists and email templates and kind of using this is email templates marketing lists and quick campaigns and how we can make use of our email templates Perfect. Thanks everyone for joining us. We'll see you next week. Bye all.